Good afternoon. I've spoken with many of you today. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Julia Edwards. I am the um, representative for Jobst here in the greater Boston area and northern New England. I'm very honored to be here to talk to you a little bit today about compression. Um, I think it's very appropriate that um, my presentation is towards the end of the day after all these wonderful speakers have gone on. And because al the reason behind that is because a lot of the times compression is an afterthought in terms of um, treatment of care. Um, it's the last thing that people discuss. And I think it's very appropriate. Um, uh, so an appropriate part of your treatment and long-term success. So it's hugely beneficial and it's something that we really need to discuss a little bit more. Um, I've been doing this a number of years. I've seen a lot of you in clinics. I've, I've spoken with a lot of you today. And I know the challenges when it comes to compression. I know that they can be difficult to get on. I know that they can be um, difficult to fit well. And so I want to talk about some of the different options because every garment may not be right, the right garment for you. We're just going to go over a little bit of um, what is compression? Why do you need compression? Has anybody ever told you why you need it? Anyone? Okay, well, you need it. So let's talk about it. Long stretch versus short stretch, circular knit versus flat knit. Um, we'll, we'll talk about a bandaging alternative, and we'll talk about some common questions that come up um, in a clinic setting. <clears throat> so before we figure out why we need compression, we need to talk about what is compression. Medical grade compression is what we refer to as gradient or graduated compression. And all that means is the greatest amount of pressure is at the ankles or the wrists, and then it decreases as it moves up the limb. For vascular patients, it promotes the return of blood flow back to the heart. And for lymph patients, it returns the, the lymph node, uh, the lymph fluid back to the lymph nodes um, in the trunk and the regional areas. Compression garments were created based on the law of Laplace, which tells us that pressure is inversely proportional to the radius. And all that means is that the smaller the radius, the greater the pressure. So let's talk about some common indications for compression. Compression can be used for anything as basic as spider veins and tired swollen legs to more severe conditions like deep vein, vein thrombo thrombosis and lymphedema. You can see on the right side that not every option is the ideal solution for, for every condition. Compression is not a one size fits all model. What's right for you may not be right for you or right for you. Um, but there are so many options. How do you decide what is right for you? That can be really confusing, and that's what we're going to kind of dive into a little bit. So let's talk for a minute about short stretch versus long stretch bandaging. Long stretch bandages, such as an ACE bandage, can stretch up to 300% of their original length. Okay, so what happens, do you think, if you are wrapped in this bandage as you are walking, as your calf is pumping, as your leg is expanding, so too is the ACE bandage, the long stretch bandage. Okay, it's made of elastic fibers, and again, it stretches up to 300%. In contrast, a short stretch bandage is made of cotton fibers, and it only stretches up to 60% of its original length, okay? This is going to be give you better containment. It's going to give you a high working pressure. It's going to promote your calf muscle pump, which is needed to, to push the blood and the fluid back up your leg or up your limb. And it's going to give you the excellent edema containment that you're looking for, okay? So um, this leads us to a discussion about circular knit versus flat knit garments, and I've had this conversation with several of you today, okay? So circular knit garments are generally um, for varicosities, vascular conditions, mild edema, and more anatomically shaped limbs. They are knitted um, on a, in a cylinder tube, and it's a constant number of needles. They're generally, generally ready to wear, what I like to call socks in a box, okay? So you go into a pharmacy, you take two circumference measurements, and then you take a length, and you're going to fit into a medium or a large. Well, so is several other people that have different shaped limbs than you are. Um, they tend to curl if they're cut. So you can see in the upper left-hand side, because of how they're made on that cylinder, 
if that garment is cut, it is going to roll down. That's why some of you, if you are wearing circular knit garments, it's really binding behind the knee, or I feel it at the ankle. It is digging into you and binding in those areas because that is how that garment is made, okay? It's generally more affordable, and um, it generally comes in more colors, and that's because they're produced in mass quantities, right? Okay. So then we talk about flat knit garments. They're generally custom made. They have seams throughout. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, this is how it's made. It's like a regular, like somebody who knits, that's what this is. And then we have to stitch it together at the end. You can see the seam down, the, down here, okay? Um, this contours the shape of the llama a lot better. You can see the actual contour of this calf, okay? As opposed to, sorry, this one, okay? It does not tolerate as much fluctuation. This garment stretches. This garment doesn't, okay? It's generally a denser and thicker fabric. It's manufactured differently. I, said, I mentioned that it's knitted like a traditional knitting needles with, at 90 degree angles. And then you, here's a good close-up picture. So it's got a nice waffle weave and a coarse structure and it really mimics manual lymph drainage, which a lot of you are um, doing with your therapist, this is going to mimic that and give you that micro massage effect that you're really looking for. And then I know it's hard to believe because they're really thick, but they are air permeable. You can actually see right through this garment, okay? So it is a breathable garment. So where does circular knit and flatten it fall in when we talk about short stretch versus long stretch, okay? You can see where circular knit garments offer more stretch and size tolerance and are going to act more like long stretch bandaging. Long stretch, okay? Whereas uh, the flat knit is going to be much more like short stretch bandage, which is the optimal solution for patients with lymphedema and lipedema. So let's see these garments in action. This is a very typical patient that I see in a clinic setting. Bilateral lower extremity, okay? What happens if we put a circular knit garment on this patient? Does that look comfortable? <laughs> I know a lot of you have experienced this, okay? Can you see behind her knee, at her ankle, even at the calf area, it is biting into her leg. This is not the ideal solution for this patient, okay? Now you see her in a flat knit garment. Doesn't that look a lot better? Look at the back behind her knees. There's absolutely no biting. There's no folding. It is contouring the shape of the limb. It is acting like a second skin. In full disclosure, this is not my patient. And those ankles, I probably would have done a little bit more too on the left to add a little bit more to make her a little bit more comfortable. So now let's talk about a bandaging alternative, short stretch elastic wraps. These have become increasingly popular over the last few years for a number of reasons. They generally are more affordable um, than, you know, traditional stockings. Um, they act as a short stretch bandage, so you can see the overlaps in the product, and it's going to mimic that short stretch bandaging, which again is ideal for um, compression therapy for lymphedema patients. They can fluctuate swelling, so they can uh, tolerate a fluctuation in swelling. So a lot of you, you know may change sizes during the day and you need to reduce a little bit either at night or during the day. This can help with that. They're a great alternative to stockings. So stockings can be really difficult to get on, right? This is a great alternative. It's great for somebody with dexterity issues. It is great um, for somebody that can't touch their toes. There are options for you instead of stockings. So some of the common questions that we get um, that I've received today. Um, when should I get a new garment? Generally, we say with daytime garments, they are good for six months. Obviously, our, if you are rotating in multiple garments, that may extend their life. But research and development has shown that after six months, the fibers begin to break down and the fabric begins to stretch, okay? So I've seen many patients that have said, I have had my garment for a year and my, my arm still fits, it still fits. That garment has stretched out and so has your arm, okay? So keep that in mind. If I wear a stocking, should I wear a toe cap? And if I wear an arm sleeve, should I wear a glove? Obviously with compression, we wanna make sure if you are wearing an arm sleeve, 
the last thing we want to do is to add pressure at the wrist and then push all that fluid back into your hand. Okay? So you may not have any swelling now, but that doesn't mean you won't long term. Same thing with the toes. If you are having issues, if you have a closed toe stocking and you're still having issues on the top of your foot or in your toe area, a toe cap is going to be an ideal solution for you. Should I wear a night garment? I hope I'm not the first person to tell you this, but lymphedema does not take the night off. Okay? It is not, it doesn't, it's not ideal for every patient, but there are a lot of cases where you should be wearing some kind of mild compression at night. You're doing so much hard work during the day, don't cheat yourself at night. And then does a zipper make the garment easier to get on? No, it does not. So the perception is that it's easier. The problem with that is, and I saw it yesterday in a clinic setting, you need two hands to actually hold the garment together and a third hand to zip it, okay? And the la based on the conversations that I've heard today, the last thing that I want to do is um, introduce something that could compromise your skin, okay? I know that they're hard to get on. We can teach you solutions to make it easier for you. Vern, you're up. Thank you very much.